Like, first and foremost, Clarissa, congratulations on all the great things that's been going on. We love it. We're seeing it. We know they hating, but guess what? There's still people that's loving it all. So we got <laughs> Um, For those in the dark about how the boxing world works, I know when they're hearing you now signing big seven fight deals in the UK, they're not really understanding why does she want to you know, matriculate her career over across the pond to, to the UK. Why outside of the, the bread and um, Scott Sports putting their broadcast rights behind you, why is this attractive to you to leave the States and now embark on a whole another journey in a whole other area? You know, um, I've always in the amateurs, like we travel all over the world and fought. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a country that I hadn't fought against in the amateurs. And then when like like in the pros, you know, with women's boxing, everybody always talk about it being, you know, in the USA or, you know, that's where it kind of started at and that's where it kind of got big at first. But now like the UK have kind of taken charge and made opportunities than what than, than what the USA is. So uh, with that. I've been seeing a lot of the UK versus, you know, USA women fights. And I think that that's what I want to be a part of. I want to have those big, and the biggest fight out there for me right now in the UK is Savannah Marshall. He's been doing a lot of talking, saying that I'm scared of her and that I, I went to MMA and I retired to not, I, I retired from boxing to not fight her. You know, all this rubbish, all this lies she's been telling her fans. And um, I just wanted to shut that up. So with that, that's why we even considered signing with Sky and a boxer. And knowing that they had signed her, we were uh, we were actually close to making a two fight deal with Eddie with Eddie Hearn for me to fight against Savannah Marshall. But um, out of nowhere, she signed with Sky and boxer, so she doesn't work with Eddie Hearn no more. And I, it was kind of weird. So we were like, okay. Uh, kind of like, what do we do now if that's the fight that we want? So we, so Sky reached out and, and, and my team started speaking with Sky and we let them know absolutely that we want to fight against Savannah Marshall and what's the plan. And so uh, I wanted to fight against Marshall de December 11th. You know, I wanted it to be right now. And um, they were saying that uh, basically she couldn't do that and that she wanted more time. So I was like, all right, whatever. So that's how the two fight deal came about. That's how the seven figures came about. And um, I'm looking forward to going to the UK and to fighting against Emma Cozen first, 21 to 11 knockouts. And then Savannah Marshall should be after uh, next year. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about Boxer. I mean, for those in America, they're a little obscure, but clearly they've been on signing spree of a bunch of great women boxers. Do you think they have a whole plan and they understand your vision in terms of the women boxing game? Or is this just a situation of opportunity because of the fact that you and Savannah want to angle for each other? I think that right now, Boxer, the reason we have the two fight deal is because they don't uh, sense the biggest star that I am right now. I think that they that they see it, and, they, and I think they're only thinking about the fight with me and Marshall, but they're thinking that they'll be able to build off of Marshall after we fight because they feel like she's going to win probably. But Marshall's going to lose the fight, and then we're going to have a talk about maybe maybe more fights and more and more figures. <laughs> But right now, uh, I think me just going over, taking the opportunity to, like, to go to the UK, to fight against their top girls, um, to have a new reintroduction to the UK boxing, even though like, they, they, they already know me over there. But I think I have a larger fan base than what uh, Sky and Boxer know already. I don't think they really know that. I mean, they know that I fought the Olympics in 2012 there and won the Olympics in London, but I don't think that they know that uh, – you know, 70% of my followers are UK people, you know, even on Instagram, even on Facebook, like I have a lot of UK fans. So um, I think that that'd be, that that'd be shown once I go over there and fight in uh, Cardiff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, once it was announced, did you feel the love from the UK? And did you really, I, thought, I mean, knowing that 70% of your fans is from the UK, it's a pretty specific number. And that's a lot more than I obviously would thought, but have you felt the love from them, or is it more like, yeah, come over here, this is the Listen, danger zone, so to speak? I have felt the love from the UK fans. I felt the hate from the UK fans. That's how I know. Like, it's, it's <laughs> you to me every day, especially, you know, with the, you know, with the talks of Kate Taylor, the talks of um, Savannah Marshall. People always are tweeting me about, about those two girls in particular. So I know I have a large, I know I have a large fan base uh, over there. And I know I have a large fan base because 
when I went to the UK just to do something on my own, I had like this uh, woke camp there where I was actually training uh, people in the UK and it was at a gym, uh, Church Hills gym in the UK. And I had over 40 people signed up and I only had like a week's class. So they would sign up like every day. And um, I just remember like walking the streets in the UK and people would double take and look at me and they were like, you're not, you're not clear the shoes, are you? Like, you're not the G-Wold, are you? I'm like, it's Gwold, but yeah. And um, <laughs> that's how I know, like I was over there just doing some stuff on my own, you know? And even when I went to the UK, like Floyd Mayweather called me on stage and everybody started clapping and screaming because they already knew who I was, you mm. know? So I have a large fan base over there. I'm just ready to just go over there to just embrace all the fans, embrace that crowd. You know, because I don't think that the USA have crowds like the UK does when it uh, when it comes to boxing, and uh, just go over there and, and you know showcase my skills and have fun. Yo, I kind of like the sound of this G wall. Don't hate on this. This is kind of fly, yo. Low key. You know what? When I heard that at first, I'm like G wall. Like, is that what they it's think? Kinda, it's kind of kind of fly. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> I thought it was kind of hard. That's why I was like. Then again, I'm like, but it's woke though. But I, I'm mm-hmm. not like offended if they if they say G woke because G in the U.S. stands for gangster. You know, so I'm so, like, oh, gangster woman of all time. You know, greatest woman of all time. It all, it all kind of go. So yeah. I actually, I'm like, mm, I guess you know. But I I just gotten so used to woke. But I won't get mad at anybody if they say G woke. I think it's kind of hard to be straight. No doubt. That's going to be like the cheat code. Like, they run up on you in America. Like, it was no g Oh, you've been to the UK? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming that one. Um, talk about adjusting to the time zones. I mean, clearly you was in New Mexico for a minute. I know you live on the East Coast. Five hours ahead in the, in the UK. How do you adjust to all this? You have to go there weeks and weeks ahead to get used to the training um, and all that kind of stuff. Where are you talking about to the UK? Yes. Because I think Wales is, like, above at the top, right? Like, good. I'm going. I'm going to Cardiff. Okay. I don't know if that's high altitude. I have to look that up. Okay, so. I'm fighting in Cardiff. Going there early. But I know that I'll be spending most of the time in London doing a whole lot of press. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm definitely gonna look into that. But I know that we're gonna go there uh, ten days before the fight, and that's because of six hour difference. And I feel like what I know from traveling abroad in the amateurs, if it's a six hour difference, you go there six to seven days ahead of time to get acclimated to the time with like the hour because your body's still going to be wanting to go to bed at you know 12 at night but it's six o'clock in the morning mm. so get adjusted to time um you know get the right food spots and all that and all that kind of stuff and just kind of get settled and just continue with training you know but um i'm actually going to adjust my time while i'm on a flight over there you know, to where I know, like, okay, this is when I should be sleeping on the plane. This is when I should be up. So just give me one more day of, of you know, uh, acclimating to the time change. But um, Absolutely. it really shouldn't be that hard, though, because I've done it so many other times. Like, I did it when I fought in London. Um, I've actually went to the UK to Sheffield a few times to train. I, we, went, we actually went to Sheffield maybe a few months before the actual 2016 Olympics. And nobody knew, but my wrist was sprained. So I really, so I couldn't spar over there. Um, I barely would hit the bag. Like I was, I really wasn't training. So anybody that was there probably was like, dang, Clarissa lazy, but it was like, I really can't even, I couldn't even punch with my right hand because my wrist was sprained. <laughs> mm, oh man, that's crazy. Um, obviously this week we got Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter. What do you think about this fight specifically in relation to Crawford, who, to be totally honest, a lot of, especially the casuals, they don't, you know, really show this man the same level of um, enthusiasm, I would say, in relation to what he's brought to the game. But do you think he needed a Sean Porter to really kind of cement his legacy in relation to fighting guys that people think he might have called for the You know, every Muhammad Ali needs their Joe Frazier, you know? And I felt like maybe the Joe Frazier for Terrence Crawford was Earl Spence. That's what they were building it up to be. But it, but it also could be uh, um, Sean Porter or mm-hmm. uh, Keith Herman or any of those top guys at 147. I feel like this is a good fight to um, to to have him in. You know, he fought against Kell Brook and he did work on Kell Brook and he's fought against a lot of good guys like Jeff Horn and everybody. But I feel like this fight here, 
get really be tested because Sean yeah. Porter knock the ball, you know, out the gate. He he knows he can't outbox um, Terrence Crawford. He's gonna right. go out there very very aggressive, and Sean Porter I mean, and Terrence Crawford are gonna have to be to also be skillful but also tame the bull. That's what he's gonna have to do, and I think that he possesses all the power and all the skills to do that. And I actually see um, him calculating, and I see Porter running into something, maybe in the sixth, seventh round. And I see him getting dropped, and I see Sean Porter getting back up like he always does, and coming back with that fire and that steam. And then I see him get uh, dropped and maybe KO'd in like the ninth or tenth round. Really? Yeah. Man. That's a big one. Okay, okay. Even though nobody's ever, ever knocked out Sean Porter. Like, 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 he's a machine. His mind is always calculating what somebody's doing. He's doing moves to make you do moves. Like, he's calculating. He's calculating. And you may think that he's just fighting, but he's doing the math. He's adding. He's subtracting it. He like a mad scientist. And then, you know, you can be coming in thinking, oh, I landed the one, two, the last four times. I'm going to do it the fifth time. And you go in for it, and he catches you with that uppercut and he let you out mm. i mean he's that calculated and um i don't think he gets enough credit for that that's why he's pound for pound on my pound for pound list like yes we got canelo i like canelo a lot he's a great fighter he just became undisputed welcome to the undisputed club because i was undisputed first <laughs> right. understand that <laughs> but like terrence crawford i mean he just got really really great skills and he's also just he an animal. He mean. He mean out there. Like you may think that oh he's boxing like, like he's smart, but once he hurts you, it's damn near impossible not to get finished. Hmm. You made a good point earlier. So who who was your Joe Frazier? Is it Christina Hammer or is it Savannah Marshall? I believe that at first it was Christina Hammer, and right now how they're building a Marshall is Marshall right now. But I think it'll always have to be somebody else. You know. Um, right. I don't think that me and Marshall fight is going to be like a, how Deontay Water and Tyson Fury was. You know, like they had a trilogy. I don't mm -hmm. think that's about that, that she's good enough to have a trilogy with me. You know, I think that after I beat her the first time, people are kind of going to see that I'm just level ahead of her and that um, on to the next opponent. They're going to be somebody else who they feel like can, can probably beat me. Last question. You know, when Jake Paul came for you, a lot of people wasn't feeling that, myself included, based on your pedigree. But do you feel like the boxers themselves, the game, should have defended you more and came for him? I'm not saying they owe that to you, but but the way you support everybody in boxing, I kind of felt like they was lacking in the way that they should have showed support when it came from. Well, well, let's just be clear. Like, Jake Paul is a made-up YouTube character who has come to boxing for, for, for show. He's, he's come to boxing to play around. Showtime, sh uh, Showtime has given him a, a, a large platform, and he feels like he's boxing. Okay, now, uh, him coming for me after my split decision, close fight, MMA loss, I thought it was, I thought it was actually funny to actually see it. And it was a few boxers who defended me or whatever, but the thing is, I've seen Jake Paul in person. He ain't gonna say a damn word to me because I'm worse than Floyd. He think he think Floyd hit him. I'll be the child, Jake Paul. He's gonna have to take me to court. He's gonna wanna sue me. <laughs> <laughs> it's best that he whoa alone. But I think that also some of some of his hate comes from I think him being very, very close with Amanda Serrano and him seeing her record compared to mine. And uh he feels that with her record and her knockouts and all this stuff that she should be a bigger, a bigger brand or a bigger fighter than me. And um, I think that's where his hate is coming from. But I, but I, it's just funny that he's, that he's not even knowing that me and Serrano, you know, treat each other like we're sisters, you know, and I, and I show her so much love uh, and, and respect. And I share the, and, and, and I share the title quote with her because me and her have that close relationship. Even though if you ask Amanda Serrano who's the quote, she will say Clarissa Shields. I still share that with her. And I always say that it's me and her. So I feel like his hate is kind of coming from that, but it's like, he doesn't know the, the ins and outs of boxing. He doesn't know why I'm such this big star. 
you know, and I don't think that he's ever watched me box. And if he did, he wouldn't talk the shit that he talked because he know that I'm really cut like that, you know? So with that to Jake Paul, um, fight a real boxer, you know, and I've already offered the opportunity for him to spar. He's not going to respond to that. And, um, you know, I just go on and do your own thing, but, you know, to, to try to kick me when he thinks that I'm down, you know, and not even realizing that I've been undisputed champ two times, that I won the Olympics two times, and him to say, oh, she's a loser, she's not good at this or that. That's how he feels about himself, honestly, because he's the loser. He's the one who can't really box. He's the one who needs to have his opponents picked carefully or else he'll get knocked the hell out. That's him. But I've managed to do two, two different combat sports, yet to get knocked out yet to be severely beaten. And him, he's going in here, you know, to me, he lost to Tyron Woodley and that gave him the decision. And he's sitting here acting like he's won a world title or something. He's not even on a level to even speak my name. You know, just because Showtime is putting him on pay-per-view, it doesn't mean that he's a great fighter. Showtime has put a lot of fighters on pay-per-view who weren't great fighters. And he, mm -hmm. he won't be the first, he won't be the last. Shout.